Hello everyone, this is Professor Robert Solis. Welcome to this video lesson. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a program that displays Fibonacci numbers, but we're going to base that on the pseudocode. And the pseudocode is nothing more than kind of English-like, kind of program-like verbiage to help you generate a solution. And you can even share this with the customer because the customer can read these items step by step. You typically use the word let when you're going to define variables. We don't use the word integer or double. We use words like whole number or real number, say for example, because integers and doubles are program specific type of uh, statements. So what I do is I list all of my variables that I think I'm going to use. I use the word print when I want to display something. Now for us, in a Visual Basic world, that's a label. I use the word read in terms of obtaining the data. And so to read means that I am getting the data from a text box in our Visual Basic program. <coughs> now, the while statement is not really a while statement. This is more like a while sentence while there are Fibonacci numbers to display. And then notice that everything else here is indented, meaning that all of these statements belong to this while statement, whereas this print statement does not. This is a separate statement that stands on its own. So I'm deliberately indenting to make sure that these guys are part of this uh, while statement. And then what I've done is to try to figure out what are those steps needed to be able to display numbers to the output. And I came up with the idea of appending the output with the first number because you can see that the first number column always contains the Fibonacci numbers from the first one all the way down. And then I will determine the third number, which is the addition of the first two numbers. The first number is going to be assigned the second number. So in essence, we're taking this and moving it over here. The third number is going to be a uh, placed or assigned into the second number, so we're taking that and putting it over here. I'm going to increment the counter because the user wants to see a certain number of Fibonacci numbers, and we keep on doing this process over and over and over again, hence this limited output here. And then finally, when I've achieved displaying all the Fibonacci numbers that the user wants to see, then I just simply print uh, output, which over here is a string. This is going to have a, a string of numbers and spaces, and I send that to the display. Now for us, that means putting it on a label. Okay, So that's the idea. So I go back over here. Let's give names to these various items. So over here we're going to call this guy txt user num. This is btn display Fibonacci numbers. Finally, this is lbl result. So, txt user num, btn, display Fibonacci numbers, last LBL result. Let me save my work. Okay, so now that I've given names to the various items, I've saved all my work, I am now ready to generate the code. So I'm going to double click over here where it says display Fibonacci number. I'm going to dis Double click that so I go into the code area. So I double click. And then typically what I'll have you do is to create these comments. Uh, declarations. Get user input. Calculation. Output. In general, that's what programs do. You do these steps first, second, third, and fourth. Sometimes the calculation and the output are really the same line item. So we'll start off with this and then I can make adjustments. Okay, so now let me go back to my pseudocode and see what it says. The pseudocode says let first num be a whole number and we're going to assign that to zero. Well in Visual Basic that means dim first num as integer and we assign it to zero. So at this point you guys are acting as translators. You are translating from pseudocode to actual visual basic code. What else am I supposed to do? 
let second number be a whole number and we assign that or initialize it to one. So second num as integer and we set that to one. Let me go back to the pseudocode and it says let third number be a whole number. Okay, so dim third num as integer, it's a whole number, and I'm not going to give it any initial value because the pseudocode tells me just declare it, not to initialize it. The next thing I'm supposed to do is to declare counter as a whole number and output as a string. I've told you that the tradition is to set this to null or to nothing, so we can just simply say this is equal to quote quote so this is an empty string, doesn't have anything. And then it looks like I need user number as a whole number. Okay, so dim user num as an integer. Save my work. That takes care of the declarations. Now, let's go back to the pseudocode. What does it say? Print, how many fib numbers do you want to display? Okay, I've already done that. I've done that in the form of a label. So we're done there. Next, read user number. So whenever you see that, what that means is you're going to get the user input. That's what it means to read. So over here, that means convert dot to int 32, whatever is inside of the text box, user number dot text. Now, did the pseudocode tell you to do this? Did the pseudocode tell you that you have to convert this text into a number? No, it did not. All it said was read user num. Well, the translation of read user num is this in Visual Basic. It's something else in C++. It's something else in Swift or Java. Right? So this is where you, as the code implementer, have to take a statement like this and know how to turn it into a Visual Basic statement like this. Okay. So we're finished with that. Next, uh, it looks like we're going to be doing a calculation over here, and then we're going to print an output. So it looks like counter is supposed to be, uh, be assigned 0. Counter 0. I set that to 0. And I'm putting that in the calculation section, because that's what we're doing, right? Makes sense. We're calculating how many Fibonacci numbers the user wants to see. In fact, check this out. While there are Fib numbers to display, now we have to change that into a Visual Basic statement. Okay, so I'll take the first word, while. Now, we have a certain number of Fibonacci numbers that need to be displayed. How about I do this? As long as the counter is less than the user number. Let's see if that works. Let's say that the user wants to see four Fibonacci numbers. Okay, so the user number is going to be four. While the counter is less than user number. Okay, so the counter starts off at zero. Then it's eventually going to go to one. Then it's eventually going to go to two. Then it's eventually going to go to three. Is three less than the four user numbers that the user wants to display? Yes, it is. And so watch what happens when the counter goes to 5, 5 is not less than user number, or 4 actually is not less than user number, so we don't want to display any more numbers. So I think this will work. See, the idea is this. Should this be counter is less than, or should that be counter is less than or equal to? That's really the big debate that we're trying to figure out. And typically when you start counting from 0, that means all the way up to but not including. So if I want four numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3. That's four numbers, starting from 0. Okay. So if I said start from 1, then that probably would be less than or equal to. So it just depends on your starting point. It depends on you know, what your relationship is. OK, now append output with first number and a space. OK, so what that means in Visual Basic is take the output and append it with, what does it say? First number, okay, so we're going to append that with first number. Now that's a, an integer, so I have to convert dot to string, whatever the first number is, and a space. So again, you were not told 
to do conversion or concatenation. This is something that you as a Visual Basic programmer would have to figure out. That statement that we just typed is in essence this, append output with first number and space, okay? So the old output is going to be concatenated with the first number and a space. Next, the third number is going to be the uh, sum of first number and second number, okay? So third number is going to be first number plus second number. Next, first number is going to be assigned second number. Next, second number is going to be assigned third number. So you see how fast we are able to implement the code once you've got the pseudocode. All we're doing is just following the logic. Next thing, increment the counter. Okay, counter equals counter <coughs> plus one. Or you could have said counter plus equals one, which is that shorthand notation that I shared with you in, pre in a previous lecture. Then we go back to the top. Is the counter still less than the user number? If it is, we do the output statement and all these assignment statements, and we keep on doing this over and over and over again. This output variable is going to have zero, then a zero and a one, then a zero one one, then a zero one one two, and so forth and so on. It just keeps growing. When we're done, what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to print the output to the display. Well, that seems to fit right here. What is the display? In our case, it's a label. So all we're going to do is take that output string. See, this thing is a string. See the word string down here? This thing is a string. We're putting a string into a text property, which those are synonymous. And we're going to display the result. Let me save my work. I'm going to run the program. Let me move the program over here so that you can see the code down here. I want four Fibonacci numbers, okay? Zero, one, one, two, okay? How about 10 Fibonacci numbers? Let's see if this is correct. So the third number should always be the addition of the first two. So let me see, yep, one plus one is two, one plus two is three, five, eight, 13, 21, the addition of these two, 34, so forth and so on. Can I do 50 Fibonacci numbers? Let's squeeze into here. Uh-oh. Looks like something has happened uh, when I put the number 50 in there. Looks like it says some sort of a overflow has occurred, an arithmetic operation uh, with an overflow. So if something like that happens, I'm going to have to perform some sort of an investigation. Why did this happen? Wow, look at that. Second number is, what is that? Uh, this is million. This is billion. This is 1.8 trillion. <laughs> I don't know. Something's going on here. Maybe I better investigate what's happening here. Uh, so I'm gonna if I if something like this happened to me, I would just simply break and I'll stop the program. Actually, before I stop the program, if I hover on top of this, wow, how did that number get so big? Same thing over here. If I hover on top of second, and then of course third is going to be a big number. See, first and second cannot be those big numbers because what are what are the data types of first number, second number, and third number? Those are integers. What's the largest size of an integer? 2.147 billion, exactly. So this is way bigger than 2.147 billion. So it looks like it couldn't handle it. So maybe I should have the user say, enter a Fibonacci. How many Fibonacci numbers do you want to display that are less than 20 or something like that? Let's experiment with this. Uh, let me see, will 20 work? Yeah, that'll work. That, that's smaller than 2.147 billion. How about 30? Uh, that'll work because that's um, 514,000. And it looks if I added those two, that would be about 800,000. So um, how about 40? Does that work? Yeah, it looks like that could work too because that's, uh, what, 5.7 million. So we're getting close to that 2.147 billion. Maybe it's going to be 45? Let's see. Looks like that worked. How about uh, 46? So we're, we're getting close. Yep, that's it. So I'm going to break the code. I'll stop the program. You now understand what the problem is. You are putting numbers that an integer can't handle. So there's nothing that stops you 
from using a different data type that can accommodate bigger numbers. Um, so what are those? Let me go back to um, Internet Explorer. I'm sorry, not Internet Explorer. Browser over here, and I'm going to type in uh, Visual Basic Data Types. Let me move that, this down here so you can see what I typed. Visual Basic Data Types. Oh, it looks like it's giving us some data types over here. Let's, uh, let's take a look at this. And um, here's our integer. And it's a number that can go up to 2.147 billion. Look at this. I can create an integer 64-bit. That goes up to, goodness, what is that? So that's um, million, billion, trillion, septillion. I think it's quintillion, nine quintillion. So that's, I, if I wanted to, I could create an 8-byte number that can hold a very, very large whole number. So if you wanted to, you have options. We'll leave this as an integer. We'll just tell the user, hey, you can only display up to 45, say, for example, if you wanted to change that. But the idea is this. You need to know how to go from pseudocode to actual visual basic code. All right? This is Professor Robert Solis. I hope this video lesson was helpful. Have a good day. See you next time. Mm -hmm.